So welcome back. As we're all familiar with simultaneous games by now, in the next couple of videos, we'll discuss sequential games, or dynamic games, as we often call them. Sequential games are, simply put, games with some sort of a time aspect in them. So if one firm acts before the other, it's going to have quite important implications for playing the game. So the second firm will be able to play the game knowing what the first firm has done. And it's going to be able to adjust its actions accordingly. And the first firm, on the other hand, has to make a decision without the requisite knowledge of the follower. Right? I don't know what the second player is going to do. However, the first firm will keep in mind that there will be a follower, and this follower is going to react in some sort rationally. Okay? So they're going to, going to build up expectations about the reactions of the follower in my own decisions. Now I want to illustrate this with an example related to the movie E.T., the extraterrestrial. So I don't know how much you're a kid of the 70s, but um, if you are, then you will remember this scene very, very vividly. Okay, so E.T. has just landed. He's hiding somewhere. He's terrified. He's hiding in the woods somewhere. And there are a couple of kids, two kids, um, that see that something is out there in the woods. It's fairly close to their house, so they feel, well, you know, we want to, uh, we want to make sure that we can find out what this, what this person, what this animal might be. So they, to lure out uh, E.T., they lay a trail of sweets, small round sweets, colored round sweets. Okay? And <clears throat> they lay the first one right at the edge of the, uh, of the woods, they the, lay the next one maybe a step or two ahead, and so on. E.T. finds the first one, he picks it up, has a look at it, and tries it, and likes it. Okay? In the second uh, step, so he looks around if there are any more, and he finds another one. Takes the next one, likes it, and eats it. And so on and so forth. So he gets more and more excited, and eventually follows this trail of sweets into the bedroom of the kids. When he picks up the last, uh, the last uh, piece of sweets, um, he picks it up, eats it, looks up because there are no more, the kids look up as well, and they start screaming, E.T. starts screaming, and chaos ensues. Okay, so that's the story that you have to keep in mind. What you may not know is that the small pieces that uh, E.T. picked up were a, a small candy called Reese's Pieces, pr uh, produced by a company called Hershey's. Okay? And <coughs> so what I want to discuss now is the backdrop to this story, the commercial backdrop to this uh, particular story. Okay, so we, we call it the Chocolate Wars, and um, keep in mind these are fictitious numbers that we're, uh, that we're using. Um, Universal Studios, which were uh, shooting E.T. at the time, they were charging, or they were, uh, they were approaching Mars, saying, well, do you want to place a product um, in this scene in E.T.? Um, if you do, we're going to charge you $1 million for that. If that had happened, if Mars had agreed to that, uh, to that offer, then Mars's gross profits would have increased by 0.8 million, so 800,000, and Hershey's would have decreased by 100,000. So to find the net profits, we have to include the payment for that, which is 1 million. So Mars's gross profits would have been minus 0.2 million. Hershey's they didn't pay anything, and they suffered 100,000 in loss in, uh, of sales. If product placement had taken place by Hershey's, which is actually what took place, what happened, um, Hershey's gross profits would increase by 1.2 million, and Mars's profits decreased by 0.5 million. So again, if we calculate the net profits, this is going to be 1.2 minus 1, and that's positive 200,000. If there's no product placement, it's just business as usual, nothing changes, no profits change. So that situation, obviously, is, uh, is, is something that was highly strategic because what happened depended on what the other firm did and so on and so forth. So how do we draw this? We can't really draw a matrix, as we'll see in a second, so how do we take into account the fact that we have sequential decisions here? We draw what's called a game tree. A game tree has the property that the first decision point always starts the game. 
this decision point and every decision point that follows represents a node. And from that node, we have decisions of subsequent players, subsequent decisions, um, will branch out accordingly. Okay? Sounds very complicated. It's actually very easy. And I want to take that example of, uh, of Mars and Hershey's to illustrate this. So the first decision was Mars. Okay? Mars got the offer from Universal Studios. And they had the offer um, of either placing their product or not placing their product. Okay. After that, the decision came to Hershey's. If product placement actually takes place, if uh, Mars signs the contract, then Hershey's can't really do anything. right? So for them, it's just a question of maintaining the status quo. If Mars does not agree to the deal, then Hershey's again has the choice between choosing product placement, so signing the contract or not. Okay, so that's the structure of the game. The next thing we need to know is what the payoffs are. So the payoffs if Mars signs and Hershey's doesn't get to sign are plus 800,000 minus 1 million, that's Mars's profits are going to be minus 0.2 million. Hershey's, as we saw, are going to be minus 0.1. If Mars doesn't sign, but Hershey's signs instead, then Mars is going to lose half a million and Hershey's is going to win 200,000. Their net profits are going to increase by 200,000. And if neither of them signs, they both get profits of zero. Okay, so that would be a structure that we can then go ahead and analyze. And we'll do that um, in the next video. But for now, what this is, uh, what this is useful, for, useful for is it can tell us something about a strategy. What do we need to know if we want to define a strategy of, uh, of a game? So we sort of have an idea already, right? We have a working definition for this course, um, which was it's a player's plan of actions in a particular game. But we need to extend this um, because we need to take into account that these are actions for every possible circumstance of this game. Okay, so in the case of um, in the case of uh, ET and uh, and Hershey's and Mars, um, we'll uh, we'll get to that later in the next exercise. Let's now have a look at price setting. Okay, price setting. We have a sequential game where firm A first chooses a high or a low strategy and then firm B chooses a high or low strategy depending on whether firm A has chosen high or low. So what are the possible strategies, the potential strategies for player B? Okay. We actually have four strategies for player B. So what are they? They are high if high and high if low. What does that mean? It means that if firm A chooses a high price, firm B is going to choose a high price as well. And if firm A chooses a low price, firm, a, uh, firm B is going to choose a high price again. So that's one strategy. What's the second strategy? Second strategy would be high if high and low if low. In that case, if firm A chooses high, firm B is going to choose high as well. If firm A chooses low, then firm B is going to choose low as well. Okay? And you can figure out what the other two strategies for player B are. Interestingly, if you compare this to um, firm A, firm A only has two strategies. They can either choose high or low. They can't make this dependent on what player B does because player B chooses later than player A. Okay? So in this short video, we've analyzed the product placement story of Mars and Hershey's as an example of a sequential game. We've used, we've drawn up a game tree and we've used it to systematically illustrate the competitive situation of Mars when they were offered the product placement deal. So in the following video, we'll try to use the game tree to help find the optimal strategy in a competitive situation. But Please first do the in-video quiz. So we've learned in most cases firms can choose between different strategies. And so please now have a look at the following game tree and tick which strategies seem reasonable for firm B. Okay, and I'll see you in the next video.